this reflex is going to be called our crossed extensor reflex. This reflex is polysynaptic. You can see we have a lot of neurons involved here, and so we have many synapses. We are going to have responses on our ipsilateral side and on our contralateral side. So the contralateral side is a side that is opposite from where the stimulus occurred. And again, we're going to see that parallel after discharge circuit to prolong our response long enough for our brain to take over. So our crossed extensor reflex is going to be involved in shifting our body weight to the contralateral side from the painful stimulus in order to support our body during the reflex and prevent you from falling over. So I'm going to outline this in a couple of different ways. I'm going to look at the um, EPSPs being sent and the IPSPs being sent and then we'll erase everything, start over and look at the ipsilateral side and the contralateral side. So our first step is a painful stimulus. In our spinal cord, our sensory neuron is going to send an EPSP to interneuron 1. Okay. So now we're going to follow all of the actions of interneuron 1, and then we'll follow the actions of interneuron 2. So interneuron 1, which we're going to show in red, is going to send an EPSP to our ipsilateral flexors. We're going to send an EPSP to our contralateral extensors and we send information up to our brain. And last but not least, and all at the same time really, our interneuron 1 sends an EPSP to interneuron 2. So now let's follow interneuron 2 in green. Interneuron 2 sends an IPSP to our ipsilateral extensors. We're going to send an IPSP to our contralateral flexors and we send information up to the brain. Okay, so on our ipsilateral side we have stimulated our flexors and inhibited our extensors. This is going to allow for the flexion of our knee pulling our foot away from the tack and we have stimulated our extensors on the contralateral side while inhibiting our flexors pushing our contralateral side down into the floor so that when you lift up your foot you are pushing the other one down and you don't fall over. So this is going to continue going until our brain gets those signals and can take over our movements. So now I want to outline this same reflex looking at our ipsilateral side versus our contralateral side. And it's going to be the exact same information, it's just a different way of outlining what's going on. So choose one that makes sense to you and that's the one that you should use to think about this process. Okay, so we step on attack. We are going to send this painful information into our posterior gray horn and we still have that EPSP to interneuron 1. Now let's just look at our ipsilateral side. On the ipsilateral side, we are going to send an EPSP to our motor neurons of our flexors and we send an EPSP to interneuron 2. Interneuron 2 is going to send an EPSP to our ipsilateral extensors. So on our ipsilateral side, we are stimulating our flexors and inhibiting our extensors to move our leg away from the painful stimulus on the bottom of our foot. On our contralateral side, 
interneuron 1 is going to send EPSPs to our contralateral extensors, while interneuron 2 is sending IPSPs to our contralateral flexors. So on our contralateral side, we are stimulating our extensors and inhibiting our flexors to push that leg into the floor to hold us up. And all the while, we are still sending that information to the brain so that our brain can take over movement. So we have all of the same information that we had before, just set up slightly differently. So whichever one makes the best sense to you is the one that you should focus on. And if you have any questions, never hesitate to contact your instructor.